let's take a minute and talk about the difference between distance and displacement. First, we're going to define distance and displacement. Then I want to give you a GPS example, like on your phone or a GPS in your car. That kind of highlights the difference. Then I'll give you a one-dimensional example on a number line, and then I'll give you another little story that shows you the difference in two dimensions. First of all, distance is the actual path length traveled. When you think of how far you went, you're thinking of distance. So this is sort of like the odometer in your car. It's a measure of how far you've really gone. Displacement, on the other hand, is your net change in position. It's where you end up compared to where you started. Mathematically, another way of saying that is that displacement is the change in position. So it's going to be your final position minus your initial position. And displacement is going to have both a magnitude, a size, and it's going to have a direction. Whereas distance is only going to have a magnitude. Easy way to see that difference is if you were to pull out your phone like I did and put in somewhere, I put in Ralph Wilson Stadium or, or football here for the Bills. And this arrow tells you the direction it is from where you are at the moment, and it gives you a distance. But this distance isn't distance in the way we're going to use it in physics class. This distance is as the crow flies. What this really is is this is a displacement. So when you see this in a list of places and it's telling you how far away something is, really what that's telling you is it's telling you the displacement from where you are right now. So another way to put that would be as the crow flies in a straight line. When you actually hit navigate, so you push the little button that tells you you want to go there, the number it gives you is a very different number. In this case, it's 77 miles. This is the true distance. This is the actual distance the path your car would have to take to get there. And that is almost always going to be longer. The best you can do is have that be the same as the displacement if you don't change directions at all. So when you talk about the displacement, it's going to have both um, a magnitude and a direction, whereas distance is just going to have the number. So let's make a, an example here to show you the difference. Let's say I had a number line. So this is going to be 0, 1, plus 2, plus 3, plus 4, plus 5. And on the other side, you've got negative. Now the negatives here are just indicating direction. So if you look at the 0, that is a reference point. So these negatives are just to tell you it's to the left as we've drawn it here, of that reference point. It doesn't mean smaller, it means direction. So if I was to make a story, for some reason, let's just say you live at negative 2. And some sort of trip takes you all the way over here to 3. So you're going to go to the right, 5. Then after hanging out at 3 for a little while, you decide you're going to go, you have some business to take care of over at minus 4. So there's two ways you can look at this trip. One, we can look at the actual distance traveled. This is the path length. And in going from 2, or rather negative 2, to 3, you had to go 5 places. Then to go from 3 to minus 4, you had to go another 7 places. So your total distance, if you had a little odometer with you, it would be 12. Your displacement is a different number, however. Now, your displacement doesn't care that you went to 3. You could go to 100 places in between. All it cares about is two numbers. The two numbers it's going to care about are the minus 4, which is your final position, and the minus 2, your initial position. So when you're calculating that displacement, or rather that distance, yeah, no, it's displacement you're going to have to take that final position minus the initial position. So that's going to be your final minus your initial. So if we were to actually put in numbers here, the final is minus 4, or negative 4. Well, I didn't mean to hit that.
Sorry about that. Your final position is going to be minus 4, and your initial position, which we're subtracting, was negative 2. So minus 4, minus, minus 2 is the same as plus 2. You're going to get a displacement that is minus 2. All that means is that you end up at a place 2 to the left of where you started. That is your displacement. So distance versus displacement. Distance is the actual path length traveled, how far you went, whereas displacement is where you end up compared to where you started, your net change in position. What does this look like in two dimensions? Well, let's just say you live at a house. That may or may not be true, but you live somewhere. And you need to go to school. At least I think you need to go to school. Okay, what's that do? Now school, we'll say, is three miles away. Now at this point, you have traveled a distance of three miles. Your displacement, however, is also going to have a direction. So your displacement would be three miles to the east. But your day doesn't end at school. Perhaps you have practice. And this practice of yours, not drawn to scale, is going to be four miles south of where your school is. At this point, what you would say is you would say that you have traveled a distance of seven miles, but your displacement is going to be the distance of the diagonal. So looking at this, you may recognize the triangle, three, four, five. You are now a displacement of five miles, we'll say southeast. But your day probably isn't done yet anyway. And let's say you were hungry, so you wanted to go to a pizza place and have some of the world's ugliest pizza for dinner. So you go back this way. We'll say that's another three miles. At this point, your distance is now three plus four plus three. Your distance is going to be 10 miles, no direction. Your displacement is going to be four miles to the south. So your distance and your displacement are different in that they're different numbers in this case, but they're also the fact that the displacement has a direction. So your displacement is going to be four south. And then finally, you go back home, maybe you're tired, and you now add four more miles to your distance. So the little odometer now has 14 miles total, but your displacement is now zero because your final position is the same as your initial position. When you subtract those, you get zero. I like to think that odometers in cars, I'm very thankful they measure distance, not displacement, because if they measured displacement, I would actually find that kind of depressing, because after all this work that you've done all day, your final change in position is zero. So distance is different than displacement. Again, distance, you want to keep in mind, has just a magnitude. whereas displacement has both a magnitude and a direction. Apparently there's no legibility requirements for YouTube, but this says displacement, magnitude, and direction. Distance has just magnitude. As long as I've got you here, I want to ask you, can displacement ever be greater than distance? Take a second, think about that. Well, to check ourselves, let's say you started here, and then you go here, and then you go here, and then you go here. Well, the actual distance you traveled would look like this. Whereas the displacement, the net change in position, would look like this. What that means is that your distance is always greater than or equal to your displacement. 
the best you can do is be the same. So if you don't change direction at all, your distance and your displacement will be the same. If these dots were on a straight line, then your displacement and your distance would be equal. Otherwise, your distance is going to be greater than the magnitude of your displacement. Always. So that's the difference between distance and displacement.